In 2009, evangelist Andrew Palau and his family were on their way to Jamaica for a tropical Christmas vacation. As the plane touched down, it skidded off the runway and crashed. Amazingly, all 154 people on board escaped with only minor injuries. Anyone who's ever been on a plane, their worst fear was that it would go down. You lived it and experienced it. What was going through your mind as the plane was crashing and immediately afterwards? We were uh, shocked. It was so horrific and so impactful that uh, all I knew was one minute we were sort of fine and irritated at the bad landing, and the next thing it was pitch black, and I was sort of, in a sense, waking up to this reality that we just crashed, you know? Did you even know where you were? I, I, I didn't realize where we were. I thought we were still in the airport, naturally. I just didn't realize we'd gone so far away from the airport and actually had landed on the beach. But uh, when I jumped off the wing of the plane with my family in tow, I realized, oh, I think I know. And then we started to run away from the plane. And then the first thing we were met with was the raging sort of Caribbean sea and the storm crashing waves. And then I really knew where we were. Now, how about your children? What were they going through? They were so precious. It, you know, the whole experience has really drawn our family together in a very unique way. You wouldn't wish anything like this upon anyone, right? Right. <laughs> but you see how the Lord uses it, miracle after miracle, to, to rescue and save everyone. The enemy had plans to destroy us, and the angels intervened. We, we know, and we're connected as a family in a way we couldn't have been otherwise. You know, we're much more respectful and I think maybe patient with each other. And uh, we also realize, you know, the Bible says our life is like a vapor, right? And when you get into a situation like that, you, you start to look at life, even in the gospel, you know, what God's done for us so much more seriously. And you say, I'm not going to waste a moment. If I have a minute and I have an opportunity, I got I to gotta help people be ready for their moment like that, which might not turn out so good. And eventually, you know, the Bible says, you know, absent from the body, present with the Lord, when you know the Lord, and so we want everyone to know the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Now, your journey didn't start there. It was actually a process to you getting where you are today. And I want to talk to you about your book, The Secret Life of a Fool. Now, I remember growing up, my grandmother always said, you never call someone a fool. That's one of the worst things that you can say about yeah. them. But you describe the person you used to be as a fool. Right. Why? Well, because that's exactly what I was. There's no two ways about it, you know. And um, when you're living life in that way, you wouldn't call yourself a fool at that point. The Bible, I was just reading and I think Psalm 112 says, a fool doesn't know the, the path that they're on. And uh, so it's kind of hard to explain your decision making in that time because you think things are going well. You have a mask that you wear to say the world is fine and everyone uh, you know, to see everything's fine with Andrew, but it's it's really not fine. And you look at the descriptions in Psalms and Proverbs of what a fool acts like and behaves like. And every time I read, I'm like, that's me. That, that's exactly me. And I think any honest person, if you'd look through the Psalms and the Proverbs, which are so valuable for life, no matter what you think about God or spirituality, if you just look at the Word of God and see the wisdom in there, you might resonate with myself calling myself a fool. In addition to being what you call a fool, you were also a rebel. You were very rebellious. What are some of the things you found yourself getting into? I, I had this mask that sort of said, I don't want any trouble. I'm not here to cause trouble. I'm not angry. But in my heart, I really was determined to do exactly what I wanted to do. And I didn't care who I hurt along the way. So, you know, alcohol and drugs and all the relationships that go along with that lifestyle really came into play early and increasingly. The further I, you know, as I went to the university and got away from the constraints of home, I. I went downhill fast. And you know, the Bible says those things, he calls them all acts that lead to death. And you're in that pit and you say, how did I get here? And I think of the prodigal son, you know, he, he got into that pit with the pigs, you know, and you see that and that's why I call myself a fool. I realized, wow, that's just where I got myself in that spiritual pit. And, uh, and, and uh, the Lord's good for his promises. You know, he says, if you seek me, you'll find me. And the prodigal son, remember, it says he came to his senses. And I remember just in this moment coming to my senses and saying, oh, God, is it, if you're real, I want to know. And if there's any way out of this, I want to find it. And I want to take it. And so Andrew found and took that way out during an evangelistic outreach in Jamaica. It wasn't the first time he'd heard his father, world evangelist Luis Palau, preach. But this time, something was different. Even though there were thousands of people around, it was just like me and God. 
and he was doing that work. And I just, uh, I just in this one moment say, God, what's keeping me from you? And he said, okay, now we're getting somewhere. If you really want to know what's keeping me from you, Andrew. And I said, yes, what is it? And just opened my eyes to see what it was, just all that garbage of my life, right? All of my lying and cheating and stealing and the abusive relationships and the addictions that I had heaped in my life and all of that stuff, it was there before me. And he calls it sin, right? And all these right. religious words. And I just began to cry. I'm so ashamed of myself. I said, please forgive me. You know, I'm so sorry. And that's called repentance. I didn't know I was repenting. I just, I had no choice. I was just before the Lord. Uh, and, and he just did what he promises. You've confessed your sin. I will cleanse you from all sin. And he did it in a moment. So you had a turning point. Now, earlier you described the person you used to be as a fool. How would you describe the person that you are today? Unfortunately, still a fool, right? <laughs> a fool for Christ, the Bible says, right? The, the, the apostle said, we're, for anything, we're just fools for Christ. The world will look at you and they'll say, that person's nuts, you know? Uh, but that's what our life is dedicated to now, just to proclaim the gospel, to share our testimony, and win people to Jesus Christ. 